evidence shows that getting children to do the majority of the work in a classroom leads to significant school improvement. In this programme, we'll see a school that uses a framework to encourage children to learn for themselves. This framework is called Formative Assessment. People are disconcerted when they see different types of classrooms, quite often because they're carrying in their minds images of classrooms in the past. Uh, and underlying those images are views about how people learn. And one common view is you learn by being receptive and passive, so people pour learning into you uh, and you absorb it and then you can pass it out or use it. Uh, acres of research into learning show that doesn't work. <laughs> Quite different is the view of learning which is more like the learning that happens every day in families, in the street, in playing sports, in getting on with your job for an adult, where you pick up ideas, you argue with them, you puzzle about them, you drop them if they don't work, you try them, you learn from trying them, and so on. That's the way very young children, before they enter school, learn, and learn prodigiously. When children come to our school, uh, I expect them to take responsibility for their own learning. So I want them to be very aware of what they're learning, uh, where it fits into the big picture, uh, what criteria they need to develop their learning, uh, and they need to be a part of that. They need to be able to assess that. They need to be aware of those criteria, and they also need to understand how they can move themselves forward. And to enable the children to move themselves forward, formative assessment employs the following techniques. Defining the learning intention, Deciding by consensus the success criteria. Designing the learning environment, which can mean working in groups, with partners, and using mind maps and resources outside the classroom. And developing the learning through feedback, either between children or from child to teacher. The lesson you're about to see is a Year 6 revision lesson on light. Here, the teacher, Julia Turner, won't be doing the teaching to passive learners. Instead, she'll be overseeing an active environment where the children okay. take responsibility for their own yeah, learning. No problem. OK. Before we move on, though, what we need to do, we need to get together and decide what do we already know about light? What do we know? Where are we going to take it? What gaps do we need to fill in? All right? OK, with your partner, I'd like you to come up with three things that you know about light. Um, light can be formed artificially and naturally. Yeah, like, say like you look into a mirror or something, it like, like comes off the mirror and like into your eyes and then like reflect, reflects back. So you like you see a reflection of yourself or something like that. OK, right, you're six. We're going to put all of your ideas onto a mind map, OK? Using a mind map provides clear visual feedback on what okay. the children already know okay, let's see and lets them see like what they might and need to learn. Light, if it hits an object, it will not go through, it will leave a shadow on the other side of the object. Right, OK, so we've got shadows. OK, put objects in the way. Rihanna? Um, it depends on what time of the, in the day that the shadow, how big the shadow will be. Right, so using our mind map, we're going to start working through today's session, OK? Our learning intention for today, which you do me down, is I will be able to explain that light travels from different sources, how it enters our eyes, and what happens if the light is blocked in any way. That's a huge learning intention, isn't it? Yeah. But we'll get all of that in today's session. So our success criteria, the things that you are going to be checking your learning against, identify light sources, know how light enters the eye, understand how shadows are made, and use key vocabulary. They're all the things you'll be able to measure your learning against and the things that you'll be able to highlight later and say, I've got it, I'm nearly there, or I need to work a bit on this. I believe that our role in schools is to facilitate children's learning and a good facilitator knows to take the child from the point where they are and help them to move forward using their prior knowledge and building on that so that the work in the classroom should be done by the children. A well-managed classroom where good learning is happening may to the outsider 
if a little chaotic, a little noisy, even disruptive. You've got to look very carefully at what's happening and the nature of the child's involvement in what is happening before you can make a judgment. Having established with the children what the learning intention is and how they might achieve the success criteria, their investigations on light begin using resources they've chosen themselves. Got a shadow? Can you see it? Yeah. It just bounces off. It has, it has. That's got a shadow. Yeah. Yeah, you can see a shadow when I don't when I do it through the hole you can see it. So there's start with tin form. That seems to have a shadow and a dim reflection. Alright, so how are we getting on here? Um, okay. We've got tables saying um, whether things make a shadow or not. And we've only um, done like a couple of things that actually forms a shadow. So how can we take it further? What can we do now? We could get some solid stuff. Like... Through skillful questioning, Julia encourages the children to develop their thinking without doing any direct teaching. You're going to extend what you've been given and see what you can do. Excellent, well done. That would be a good starting point to con continue, do you think? Yeah. It's transparent yellow light. Midway through the lesson, and Julia interrupts the investigations to get some feedback. If I had this and I had Sam's... Pencil. Would they both create a shadow? What do we need to do? Ian, can you refine it for me at all? When an opaque object gets shone on, a shadow is formed. So when an opaque object is shone on, a shadow is formed. Is that right, Ian? Yes. OK. If we think then, what's the difference between this and that? If we think about Ian's answer, the difference, Chloe? The orange plastic is... um. Transparent. Transparent, it's see-through. Whereas the uh, pencil isn't, it's um, solid, so you can't see. Through. Is it solid? Are they both solids? Yeah. Well, they are both solids. They're both solids. That's, is it opaque? Opaque. OK, and that's some of the vocabulary we needed to pick up in our session. Experiments in developing better learning through formative sessions have shown that standards are raised in the normal tests, not in tests tailor-made to this initiative, but in the normal tests. Our own experience with schools where we had them compare classes doing this work with classes that were not again using the school's own tests, or depending on the class, the Key Stage 3 tests or GCSE, the same result. They were marked improvements. This measurable improvement is gained by keeping the lesson agenda about learning. Throughout, Julia is defining the learning process for the children and encouraging them to reflect on their understanding using posters. To explain what the pictures are and everything. Is there anything else we could use to help us make sure that our poster has everything in it that we need? Jeff. could use other people to, with their smarts, so like people who word smart might be able to help you um, with writing and what you could put and things and people who are mm. smart can help as well. And remember, <coughs> your partner is there. Why do we need to remember our partner is there? Why is that also important? Mohammed? If they're stuck on anything or need help. OK, if they're stuck on anything or need help. If you get stuck, your partner can help you. If you get stuck, your partner's there to help you. I will be stopping every so often and asking you to review each other's work. Because <laughs> remember, your, if your partner is working, working really hard, and there may just be something in there that you think, oh, that word's not spelt correctly, or something like that, you can then help them to improve their work and make it even better. Before completing their poster, the children need to fulfil the remaining learning intention. How does light enter our eyes? Empowering them to take responsibility for their own learning means giving them the freedom to research their own information outside the classroom. At Two Waters Primary, they're encouraged to leave the classroom to find out the facts for themselves. We see a light source when the light from the source enters our eyes. But beware, you must never look directly at the sun because the amount of light travelling from it will damage your eyes very quickly. So when the um, sun reflects onto an object, the object reflects in your eyes, and it doesn't have to be shiny. Because, you know, at night time, because there's no sun, yeah, um, you can't, it's not reflecting on any object, so you can hardly see. Another device for sharing knowledge is the use of smart cards. 
Smart cards hold information on who is smart in different subjects. These cards provide the children with an easy way to identify someone else in the class who might be able to help them. Hey, we have some ideas about what's going to go on our posters. Um, yeah. We're going to do like our experiment. Let's see your plan. So you've got your title. And Assessing each other's work helps the children understand their own learning and where they might need to go next. Do you want to check each other's? Check our criteria. Check spelling. It may sound soft if people are assessing one another because surely they will all be uh, unrealistic and romantic and all say we're all okay really aren't we, we've done very well and so on. Uh, it's not like that in practice. <coughs> Anybody who's done it finds that pupils are harsher on one another and even on themselves uh, than their teacher would be. They're very critical of work done. Remember to do the nighttime bit? Yeah. Because so, you can't see anything in nighttime, remember? Yeah. yeah I'm going to ask Mohammed to come up because he's right at the front, so it's nice and easy then. Uh, I've got sources of light and natural and artificial. I've got um, the shadows from sunrise, midday to sunset. Jodie, can you share your poster with us? Uh, well, light bounces off objects into your <coughs> eyes. So um, that's why in the dark you cannot see because there's no light to bounce into your eyes. With the lesson at an end, how effectively do the children think they've met the learning intention? Using traffic light cards provides some quick visual feedback for Julia. How do you feel you have worked today? Let's just see a show of cards. OK, most of us had green up there. Joe, I noticed that you had amber. Can, can you feed back to us why you're not on green yet or where you think you still need to go to get to green? Well, I don't really understand, like, the bouncing off the mirror and all that kind of right. thing. So it's the reflection part of it you're not so sure of yet. Yeah. Was reflection something we were focusing on today? Not really. No. If you think, Joe, have you learned about how light enters your eye? You have. So do you think, if, we were to, if I would say to you, can you identify light sources? Do you know how light enters the eye and un do you understand how shadows are made? Would you be green or amber on those three things? Um, green. Green. So the bit that you're amber on, it means you've gone one step ahead of us and that's something that we'll be working on in the next session. OK, well done, Jo. Well done, everyone. I'm really pleased with how today's lesson's gone. Next time in science, we'll be moving on to reflection. Well done. You've all done really, really well. The children at Two Water School, when they move on, um, I hope take with them their lifelong learning. I'm not too bothered about what levels they've got here and in what. What I want to know is that they can take the lifelong learning skills with them. They know how to assess their work, they know what to look for, and they know where they're going with it. They're motivated. We know that when they move forward, they're using their thinking skills, and they're using the tools with, that we have shared with them, and I think that's great. If you want to do it, make sure you've got support and see what fits for you because you'll have to work out which approaches work best for you. There's no recipe here that every, everyone should follow strictly. Everyone should turn them into their way of being a teacher.